What's up guys, Alton from Microgrinder Poker School here with you guys tonight to share with you guys some run bad and to show you guys why short term run bad really isn't that big of a deal because when we think about poker, the most important thing is the long term expected outcome of a hand and that's the expected value or the EV of a hand. So tonight on Global Poker playing 10 and L and 20 and L, primarily 20 and L, I lost probably combined between both of them in about two hours of play. I lost around five buy-ins, running really bad, getting all sorts of suck outs, and just not running good at all, not hitting cards. And when I did hit cards, getting second best a lot um, with some really strong hands. And it was frustrating, but in the long run, I know that a lot of the plays I made are way plus EV. They're super profitable. So even though it sucks to lose in the short run, and even though I lost around five buy-ins in about two hours of play, five tabling and six tabling off and on throughout the night, I know in the long run, the style that I played and the way that I played is profitable. And really, that's all that matters. And I want to share that with you guys because a lot of people get frustrated when they run bad. And it, the more hands that you play, the more you understand is that this is just the ebb and flow of poker. Sometimes you run good, other times you run bad, and it's just part of the game. So... I've had numerous sessions where I've lost like five buy-ins and it's, I mean, this doesn't phase me anymore. Um, it was funny because tonight I was chatting with a lot of people, more and more people know who I am on global poker. And uh, one guy was saying, he's just it's like, he thought it was amazing that I never got irritated or tilted when I was recording videos and I was running bad. Um, I just told him, you know, I just, it's just experience. The more you play, the more you get used to it and the more you understand about these bad beats is that you understand you made a profitable play and that's all that matters. So let's go ahead. Let's get into it. What I'm going to do is with you guys is I'm going to share the hand and I did our basic EV calculation on three different hands where I got all in with the best hand. And then there's a couple other ones that are I just want to share with you because they just kind of suck. It just kind of shows how bad I was running. But with the first three hands, I got the money all in with the best hand. And I want to show you long term how those plays were profitable versus my opponent's calling range all in. So let's go ahead. Let's get into it. So first hand is 10 and L. We have a short stacker goes all in for $2. And we have another player over here that just decides to call the $2. Um, and I felt that this call was pretty weak because a lot of people, to isolate this fish heads up, they just shove all in. I felt like this was pretty weak. And it's pretty standard for people to cold call three bets, um, cold call big ISO races. It's just not really that big of a deal for a lot of people. So $2 isn't a lot, even though on maybe like another site, maybe like on America's Card Room, you're going to think that, wow, $2 means he has a strong hand. This person has a strong hand. But on global, you'd be surprised how many people cold call three bets and four bets at 10 and L, 4 and L, and 20 and L. So I felt this was weak. So I decided to re-isolate all in. And this player decides to call. And this is why I say in the short term, it doesn't matter. They called with king queen offsuit. They got the money all in, 100 big blinds, effective stacks with king queen offsuit versus a re iso with ace queen offsuit. So let's take a look at the EV calculation before we run the hand out because I want you guys to see in terms of the importance of the hand. This is hand number one. So I did all the calculations in Equilab based upon when we got all in. And my EV calculation, I only based it upon me and this opponent heads up because the $2 here with this person is kind of like iced on the cake. We'd have to do a separate EV calculation um, for all three of us for the side pot. I just did the main pot of us all in. Um, or we could just say me and this opponent getting all in 100 big blinds pre-flop. So let's pull this back up. So I'm risking 1060 with my all in. And so I lose 1060 or I win the 1060 from that opponent calling my all in. And based upon our preflop equities, I'm a 75% favorite, so I'm only going to lose 25% of the time. So my long-term expected outcome of this hand is to profit $5.30. So in reality, every time that I put in this amount of money, I expect to get back $15.90 because I'm profiting $5.30. And so let me go ahead and do that with all of these hands. And so this is kind of one of the sickest runouts. And so 
if you take a look at this, okay, this opponent ends up flopping a gutter, but this opponent blocks some of their outs. They block one of the jacks, so they only have three outs. So on the flop, three outs, and they miss on the turn, and of course I lose. They hit a three outer, their 6% equity on the river, and take it down. Um, and this was early in the session. I was like, oh man, I hope that my session doesn't continue to go this way. And it did. So let's jump to hand number two. Let me check the time. We're at five minutes. So hand number two, let's see. I don't remember off the top of my head. Oh, ace king. I think a lot of these are ace queen, ace king type of hands. So we get an open limp. I iso raise pretty big. And in all actuality, an iso raise up to 90 cents at 20 nl on this side is not enough. I probably should have made this like 1.2. Um, so this player just calls. Um, they don't have a full stack, so assume that they're not so great. We have a really short stacker call. And then back to the original limper, they call as well. We go to the flop. Decent flop. So I do lose to ace jack, but in reality, looking at their entire range, I beat ace queen, I beat ace 10, I beat ace 9, ace 8. I mean, I beat tons of aces. I beat a lot of draws, king queen, queen jack, king 10, all sorts of gutter Broadway draws. Um, I beat some some draws for the wheel as well. So we bet $3 into 380 This opponent calls, and we go to the turn. And so there is just under $10 in the pot. The turn is... It doesn't really complete any draws, but it allows them to call with a lot more draws. And so because the stack sizes are so weird here, this opponent has 13, 39, there's $10 in the pot. I didn't want to bet like a half pot size bet and have to call on some just sicko river. So I decided just to overbet shove on the turn here, thinking that they will call with tons of draws and weaker aces. And the opponent obliges, but you'd be surprised. It's my arch nemesis, king queen again. So we lost king queen over here. We're going to lose against king queen over here. And again, they hit a gutter and they make their straight draw. So not running so great. But again, and this is a super profitable play. So while it sucks that I lost that hand and I lost a $37 pot, if we pull up our EV calculation on the turn, I'm a 91% favorite to win this hand. I'm only going to lose 9% of the time. And when I win, when I put the opponent all in, I lose that 1339, but I win the total amount in the pot when they call and the money that's already in the pot. And so the EV of this play is $19.90. When I bet 1339, I expect to get 1990 back. And in terms of the amount of money that's already in the pot plus the EV expected amount, on the average, when I make that play with the amount of money in the pot and the money left behind, I'm going to make a lot of money. So I wasn't I wasn't too happy that I lost because I was a huge favorite, but it does happen. Um, and in fact, um, I'm surprised that Equilab said that this person had 9% because with rule 2 and 4, in terms of their outs, they only have 4 outs. Um, it's closer to 8%, but I guess, I mean, we rounded up a little bit. Maybe I rounded down, so um, somewhere between 8 and 9%. So lost that hand, but in terms of the EV, super profitable play for me to overbet shove exploitably there to get called by a lot of weaker draws. And so when you guys have this happen, don't get irritated. Don't get pissed. Take a note on your opponent and take a note of what they're willing to do. Because when somebody is risking that much money on the turn with that weak of a hand, you're going to make a lot of money. That's why this site is so damn profitable. All right, let's jump to hand number three, another hand that I got the money all in with. So let's take a look. We open raise with 5-6 suited. And we get a call from the button. We get a call from the small blind, big blind folds. We flop a baby flush. This person puts out a small blocker bet. Of course, we just go ahead and pot it up against short stacker to get the money in. And he obliges. And you can't blame him. I mean, he's got top pair, top kicker with the nut flush draw. So, of course, he's going to get the money in. I mean, he thinks he's good a lot. Um, but, of course, we lose. He ends up hitting his flush on the turn. And so, again, you may be thinking, man, I'm just running bad. This is not good. But you know what? I would get the money in all day and all night with this hand on this board texture but regardless again we look at the ev of getting all in on the flop so i lose two dollars but i win 436 that's in the pot 
I win 68% of the time, I lose 32% 30, of the time, and so my EV is plus 232 on top of my investment. And um, my EV calculation is actually incorrect on in terms of how much I win. It's actually that, the amount that I invested plus the profit. And so let me just double check these numbers. There we go. So every time here that I invest $2, I expect to get 432 back in the long run. Every time here where I invest 1339, I expect to get 3329 back in the long run. And here every time I invest $10.60, I expect to get 1590 back. So this is the plus amount, the profit. So all these plays were profitable, very profitable. I got in as a huge favorite on all of them. And really, it's so long that your EV is a plus EV amount, and I'm making it green just to show you guys the importance of it. So long as it's a plus EV, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if you win or lose in the long run because it's going to happen. Um, it's just part of the game, and shit happens, crap happens. Um, but so long as you're making a plus EV play, that's all that matters. And I think a lot of people don't understand that the currency of poker, and do I have my wallet up here? No, I don't. Um, the currency of poker is not money. It's not the actual hard, cold cash that you're going to get back at the end of the night. It's EV. That's the currency of poker. Long-term expected profits over the long run. And so a lot of people don't understand that. Um, so the video is not too long. I guess I'll show you guys these other two hands that I lost with. And I would call this one pretty sick pretty gross just because of the way that that it turned out and this is like something like probably maybe like my fifth hand on this table um and so let's go ahead and let's just get into it so blind versus blind i open raise i uh this guy decides to defend and i probably should have made this like 80 cents exploitatively i mean i, I think i made it too small so the flop is then eh, kind of a dry board fixture 638 um, I think it hits some of his calling range with some pairs, some sort of combos, um, but not too much. So I bet 85 cents into 120 for value. He calls. The turn is the five of hearts. Again, now I think he probably picks up some sort of gutter draws with like a 7x, um, a 4x type of a hand. I bet 199 into 290 and thinking that he probably doesn't have that much and he doesn't have that great of equity to improve. And so he calls again. And the river to me is the pure nuts. I was like sweet on the river. I hope that he has a lower set. I hope that he has two pair like six eight. Um, and I hope that he has a hand that's strong enough to call. And so I end up rivering top set and let's see how it turns out. And so I exploitatively bet really large to make it look super polarized. And so um, in terms of, of this strategy here is that a lot of people when they over bet, on the river, they're super polarized because it's either the nuts or pure bluff where they can't win. And I wanted to my opponent to think that that I was just full of crap here. Um, and unfortunately, I face a raise, but I only have six something behind. And he defended seven four offsuit in the big blind, picked up a gutter on the flop, hit the gutter on the turn. That in my right mind, I never saw him with seven four. 7-9, yeah, but it's such a small amount of combos. Um, Ace-4, I mean, Ace-4 actually didn't get there. 2-4, um, 2-4 two four, two four really doesn't make that much sense either. So 7-4 or 7-9 for the straights, 5-6-7-8-9, are really the, the only two things that he could have that, that beats me there. Um, he could have still played sets. He could have two pairs like 6-8 um, as well. And in terms of the combos, um, I, I think it's pretty close. And by the time I overbet the river and I wanted to induce a call, when he shoves all in, I have to call with the amount of money in the pot with six something left behind. And it's just kind of a sicko spot where I'm like, oh, really? 7-4 offsuit? Um, how do you range your opponent on 7-4 offsuit? Well, it's global, global and people have weird ranges. So when you're trying to put crazy people on weird ranges, good luck with that. Um, it's not gonna you're not gonna be very accurate a lot, and it's just kind of just the way that these games play. But the fact that he defended seven four offsuit just tells you a lot that he's a really bad player, and that he's actually defending that weak of a hand.
uh, the funny thing too is we were chatting about it because lots of people on the table knew who I was and I was just having a good time and and um and he's like I but I flopped a straight guys come on and it's like uh, no you didn't flop a straight but uh you ended up turning it and uh, against a river top set of jacks so on a site this bad where people are making moves with let's exclude this hand but with hands like this getting all in and hands like this I mean how do I fold top set on the server if I do, I'm overfolding. So the money's going to go in when I have top set of jacks on this because I get value from tons of lower sets, two pair combos, um, and then sometimes I lose two crazy 7-4 offsuit straight or a 7-9 straight, but it is what it is, blind versus blind. All right, last hand, last hand. So we open raise under the gun, 3.5x with big slick. We get a call from the small or the big blind. Pretty good flop. Um, interesting enough, he leads out, and so we decide to make the call. In terms of him leading out here, when people typically lead out on this site, when they're leading out for a decent amount, two thirds of pot or better, it's a value bet. And so sometimes he has flush draws, sometimes he has straight draws, sometimes he has a combo draw, sometimes he has two pair, sometimes he has sets. Um, and I didn't want to raise ace king here to have him re-raise and blow me off my hand i felt that by calling here i'll keep some of his semi bluffs in and so i decided to call instead um and given the sizing it felt like it, it was more value oriented than a semi bluff he checks turn when the spade gets there which is really interesting i decide to check back as well because i'm thinking well maybe he ended up turning the flush and he's slow playing that uh, maybe he had five six and he ended up turning the straight and he's still playing that. So I decided to check back for pot control. And the river pairs the three. I feel like this is actually good for me. Um, unless he has a three and he boats up. He decides to uh, check again on the river, which shows a lot of weakness. And so I figure, well, now I guess I go for some thin value. So I bet 150 into 350, really thin value. And he decides to call and he turns up with ace four suited. Um, kind of a, an odd hand, kind of an odd way that he played this hand. And, um, I mean, check call on the river, donk bet, flop, check turn, and check call on the river. So very interesting. But this is kind of like the story of my night, um, how bad I ran. I mean, not only stuff like this and, or flopping um, um, the flush and losing, but, I, I mean, I flopped trips one hand and lost um, – Lots of times I'd have top pair, top kicker, and against some really weak passive fish, um, facing three donk bets for pot, 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 um, and sometimes in a three bet pot, sometimes at, as me, the PFR, and having to make some really big hero folds, um, having big hands like pocket queens and pocket pocket king several times, and flopping an over card, and just having to, um, and facing like a full size donk bet on a flop and, and folding my hand, making some really big hero exploitative folds. And so overall, by the end of the session, I was down just under ninety dollars. And so combining twenty nl and ten nl, I would say around four to five buy-ins. Um, I'd love to see. A graph. I wish I could have a graph of my session, see how far I was under all in EV. Um, guarantee, based upon just those three hands together, that um, if you looked at my graph and my all in EV was slightly, you know, in the green, um, I'm sure in terms of my actual results would be way under. I would say at least three buy ins under. So pretty damn, um, pretty damn horrendous for one session, but this is all that matters, folks. So just remember this is the currency of poker this is all that matters me running bad whatever it happens um on a side note i don't know the next time i'm going to play be playing on global i made um a conscious effort to force me to write my book i took all my money i did a withdrawal request off of global and i only have a little bit of money on ignition to force me to write my book because I'm going to Las Vegas. I'm leaving on the 22nd of this month. Let me pull my calendar up. And we are now, it's the 5th. So I have one, two. I have just over two weeks. My goal is to finish the rough draft of my book to get it out to my various editors. And I'm about maybe like 20% done with the post flop section. So I made a conscious effort to withdraw all my money off of Global Poker to force myself to write because what I'm finding what I'm doing at night is that when I don't want to write, 
I pull up poker and I play poker. And so all the money is off of there. It's going to go into my PayPal account. And I'm probably just going to um, put in my bank account and then take some more money. I, I don't have that much in my bankroll here at the house ready for Vegas. That's another thing too. So a little more money for the bankroll for Vegas. But it'll force me to write my book because the money's not on there. The downside is that with Global, because everything's through, through PayPal, I can just pop some money back on there. If I feel and I get the itch to play, I can just go into PayPal and put some money on there. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not. So if you guys see me posting a lot of YouTube videos now between this 22nd of October, remind me that I'm supposed to be writing on my book, writing my book, and I'm not supposed to be playing a lot of poker. I am going to try to stick to the one to maybe one and a half. Um, you can't really do one and a half, but one to two videos per a week. I still have some money on ignition. So I'm going to try to do maybe like three videos between now and when I leave for Las Vegas. I'm going to be gone for a week. Um, but if you guys see me posting several videos a week, you guys need to remind me to write my book. Um, just because it's funner to play than it is to write the book sometimes. So anyways, guys, we're just over 20 minutes. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you guys like all the pre -vi free videos I put out, please check out the description area down below my Patreon account areas down below. You can click on there, support this channel for as little as $1 per month. And if you support this channel for $10 per month, you get access to all the Microgotten Poker School courses and a free copy of my Essential Poker Math book, the Kindle edition. So thanks guys for watching. Hope you have an awesome day. Hopefully you guys got some value out of this video talking about EV versus short-term results. Take care. I'll see you guys at the next video.